Wednesday, March 8th is a day, a day planned to become a historic milestone for not only Relativity Space, but also the space industry, because there would be the world's first 3D printed rocket launch. It would become the first methane fuel rocket to ever do so, passing over the ULA Vulcan booster and even SpaceX's Starship. But sadly, with just over a minute to go before liftoff, it was scrubbed. How will this failure affect the company's plans? And what's next? Do they have a chance to beat SpaceX? We'll find out everything today in this episode of Alpha Tech. Relativity Space, the brainchild of Tim Ellis and Jordan Noon, who suspected that they could dramatically decrease launch costs by using an innovative 3D printing technique and using those techniques to manufacture as many rocket parts as possible. The result is Terran 1, which is 85% 3D printed by mass. And the goal is to increase that even further, to manufacture a rocket that's composed of upwards of 95% 3D printed material. To get there, the company raised a lot of money, more than a billion dollars, propelling their valuation to 4.2 billion as of June 2021. Relativity's workforce now numbers in the thousands, and the company has over a million square feet of manufacturing space under its purview. Relativity Space was set to launch its Terran 1 booster Wednesday from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, but technical difficulty at the launch pad forced the company to call off the attempt. Clay Walker, Relativity's launch director, called off the countdown. All parties, we are scrubbing operations for the day. Thanks for playing. The startup aerospace company plans to try again on Saturday. The Terran 1 rocket at Launch Complex 16 was drained of methane and liquid oxygen propellants as ground teams set up for another launch attempt during a three-hour window for Saturday that will open at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 General Mountain Time. California-based Relativity Space said the launch team scrubbed the launch attempt Wednesday due to the exceeding launch commit criteria limits for propellant thermal conditions on Stage 2. When using liquid natural gas, the methane needs time to get to the right concentration, Relativity tweeted, and this is why our next attempt will be a few days from now. The test flight, nicknamed Good Luck Have Fun, is designed to evaluate the rocket as it travels into the low Earth orbit. The booster will not be carrying cargo or any satellites on its inaugural flight, according to Relativity. Rather, the company will be looking to see how the 3D printed rocket holds up under real launch conditions and if it can actually make it to space. Notably, if the test flight was successful, Relativity's booster would be the world's first methane fueled rocket to reach orbit. If the test flight is successful, Relativity's booster will also be the world's first methane-fueled rocket to reach orbit. Terran 1 burns a mix of methane and liquid oxygen to produce thrust. Methane is thought to be a more efficient and higher performing rocket fuel compared to standard options like kerosene. It's also seen as a lower cost alternative because burned methane does not coat engines with residue in the same way as kerosene, which means reusable rockets would require less maintenance between launches. Yet no company or space agency to date has successfully launched a methane fuel rocket into space. Last December, a quasi-private Chinese company, Landspace, failed in its effort to put the methane-fueled Zuki-2 into orbit. A second stage mishap doomed the vehicle. Other methane rockets are coming as well, including the Vulcan booster and the SpaceX Starship, so this was probably the Terran 1 rocket's only chance to claim the title of first methane rocket to orbit. Relativity Space, they're one of the more intriguing new space launch companies. The Terran 1 rocket designed to haul up to 2,756 pounds to low Earth orbit. Company officials have said their 3D printed boosters will offer a relatively low cost option to launch small commercial satellites into space. The company's gone through four generations of Stargate metal 3D printers along the way and has hired well-recognized names in the launch industry. Today, Relativity is one of the most ambitious, well-capitalized, and talented launch companies in the world. Within a few years, it aspires to be flying a large, fully reusable rocket named Terran-R. Terran-R's plan to complete the Trans-Mars injection burn to place the cruise vehicle, carrying the lander on the trajectory towards Mars. The cruise vehicle will then separate from the lander that, protected by an aeroshell, would enter the Martian atmosphere and attempt to propulsively land on the surface of the red planet. 
The earliest anticipated launch window occurs between 2024 and 2025, but it all has to start somewhere with nine engines igniting on Cape Canaveral launch pad and breaking free of gravity. We all know the first time they fail, but this will certainly not repel the ambition of space for relativity. Ahead of this week's attempt, Relativity CEO Tim Ellis said the flight will be a valuable learning opportunity. No matter the outcome tomorrow, we are still in the early innings of a nine-inning ball game, Ellis tweeted Tuesday. This launch won't singularly define our long-term success. There's a saying in rocketry, when the countdown clock hits zero, a million things can happen and only one of them is good. John Brost, a senior vice president at Relativity, mentioned it to me while explaining the company's outlook on the test flight. Indeed, no private space company has gotten its debut rocket off the ground on the first try. SpaceX's first three launches failed. Rocket Lab, the most successful small launch company, had its first flight go awry. So did debut attempts by Virgin Orbit, Astra, Firefly, and ABL Space Systems. And failure? Well, it would teach Relativity's engineers a lot. Relativity has something of an insurance policy. In 2021, the company pivoted from focusing on this rocket, a small vehicle at 110 feet tall, to begin building a rocket called the Turan R that is more than twice as large. Trends in the satellite industry toward heavier payloads and the lack of a clear competitor for the SpaceX Falcon series of rockets meant a bigger vehicle was a better investment. The decision takes some pressure off this launch. Gross said the company is mainly looking for proof points, that the 3D printed structure withstands the rigors of flight, and that the engines and plumbing work, and that the ground systems keep the rocket healthy and fueled up until the moment of ignition. Ross suggested that if the vehicle makes it past max Q, the time in a rocket's flight where it must withstand the largest amount of stress, it would be a major validator, as would reaching the point where the rocket's booster and its second stage separate. The two rockets being developed by Relativity share common technology and design elements. This test flight could simply be a way to develop technology for the Turan R. That's how it worked for Elon Musk's SpaceX, which only flew its Falcon 1 rocket for one paying customer before mothballing it and focusing on the larger Falcon 9. Indeed, whether it succeeds or fails, this could be the only time we see the Terran 1 attempt to launch. While the company has agreements with several customers to use the vehicle, Bro says the company will analyze the results of the test before speaking to its customers about the right way to put their payloads in orbit. Relativity has big ambitions to launch hundreds of satellites, to launch the first private mission to Mars, and eventually build a factory there. So good luck to Terran 1 on their next try. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.